Hello and welcome to another episode of Anything Arduino. In the last episode I showed you how to use the HD7881 uh, motor controller to control simple motors like this one for example. Uh, and I also said that the end goal is to be able to control motors of this caliber a bit more heavy duty. Both of these motors are from a cordless drills. Uh, and the end goal for this is because I want to motorize my movable shelves. That will be another video. Today I'm just going to... So what I've done this time is that I've... This is the all the control circuitry of the, uh, of the uh, uh, cordless drill. I have that here and... Here's from the other one, and I also have one that I have taken apart the trigger. Uh, so here's the trigger from this one. And what I've done is I've backwards engineered or, or tried to find out how the schematics looks like uh, inside one of these and how I can take as much stuff from this one as possible and use that in the Arduino. So, uh, let's take this one. What this is, this is a MOSFET that is used inside each of these drills. It's a, in this particular case, RFZ40 or 48. And, uh, and uh, it's a 60 volt uh, MOSFET and it already has a uh, cooling pad uh, on it and then inside the trigger, I'll go through this a bit more deep in a bit, is just a small chip that is rotational control that in theory just gives a PWM signal to the MOSFET which then drives the uh, chuck, the, the motor. And also you have a switch which I have taken off, it's here, which just controls the direction. And that I am going to exchange for two of these uh, relays. So two relays will do the same work as the uh, direction switch in the inside the cordless drill. And with that I think I can mimic uh, the internals of the cordless drill good enough uh, to have the Arduino control the motor which in turn will move my shelves. There. Long rambling there. But let's let's look at the uh, what's how the inside looks like and how we're gonna connect all this together and some data sheets and all that. So let's go. So here's the innards of a cordless drill which I've already taken apart. It's just a couple of screws and then you can take this out. So let's go through what's in here. So here's the motor. Uh, oh no, that wasn't good. <laughs> and that's the, this is the, um, <laughs> this is the gearbox, uh, which you can see is a planetary gear in at least two stages, I believe. And should be like that. Yeah, I'll take a look at that later. It's a lot of grease and, and lubrication here so that's why I need to have it on the plastic bag. Uh, here's the trigger and here's most of the of the electronics is in here except for the MOSFET which is already on a nice little uh, heatsink and then the battery connector. So let's start by going into the trigger and see the components of that one. So first off, here's the direction switch. So this is usually a button that sits on your on the side of your drill that you can push either way. And this is connected here the this has come loose but it's connected like that so directly to the motor from uh, 
from uh, the innards of the trigger, which we'll go through in a bit. So let's open this up. All right, so everything came loose here, but technically what it is, it's... There's two springs and two of these connectors that either connect like those two or those two. And that means that... And th this is the part that I want to, with two relays, I want to mimic this part. Because with, with the relays we can choose either that, that path or that path. And the same that path or that path. I'll show that more in detail in a bit. So now we can remove the motor. That's actually where all the grease is. So let's hope we can get that back together later. So that's that. And then the trigger. Let's go inside of this one. So the trigger is just, uh, there's nothing here, there's probably uh, a piece of metal or, or carbon there, which, nope, actually here's the piece of metal. So here you have, I don't know if you can see this, but this is a, this is a very rudimentary potentiometer and then inside when we open up this even more here you have the here's the potentiometer goes back and forth like that and Actually not sure what that one is. That was not in the previous one I opened. Uh, so here you have a chip which usually is a rotational controller. I haven't checked this one uh, yet. And the layout or, or the schematics of this is in the one I checked it was just a complete mimic from the application notes or the data sheet. So nothing special there. The only difference is this I believe it's a Zener diode and I believe it is done as a rudimentary voltage control uh, thingy to get the, the correct uh, voltage to this circuit from the 14.4 volts from the battery. And then you have a couple of connection points here which I'll sh also show in a minute that just connects all these things together with each other uh, which makes it work so let's so I backwards engineered one of these just to make sure that I understood how it worked and let's look at that this here on the left is my <laughs> backwards engineering of uh, that circuit or a similar circuit from another drill. They're all almost the same and almost use the same components, all of them. So this circuit here in the middle that you also saw in the uh, other trigger is a GS069, a DC rotational velocity controller for electronic electronical tools, high output current. And what it does, if we look here, so here we have the potentiometer uh, and it reads that value, all these components are for reading that value except for the Zener diode which is connected directly to voltage plus and that I believe is to uh, control the voltage of the, uh, for, to the circuit. So here's that connection point I showed. Uh, so here's the output that goes into the MOSFET, which then goes 
back into the uh, trigger and then out to that little switch or, or the, which will use the relays for instead down here here is that this exact circuit except for the zener diode and this is from the data sheet of the gs069 so um just to compare the two that it is that same circuit here is that same circuit but removing the gs069 and just adding a pwm pin from the Arduino into the MOSFET, we'll look at the MOSFET as well, uh, which then is connected to ground and the middle pin is connected to the switch, which in this case is two relays, one uh, where the, so let's add normally closed, normally open, normally closed and normally open. So what this means is that in the relaxed state, when you have no control input to the relay, then it is normally closed. So there is a connection here when the relay, when there's no power to the relay, there will be a connection here. There will not be a connection here. It is normally open. So by connecting voltage plus to normally closed on one relay and nor normally open on the other you get uh, and then they and then you can switch between the two here down to the connection to the motor uh, on the common pin so you either get it from the MOSFET going this way like that to voltage plus or you get it get it going that way to voltage plus and then you have the direction pin here is just one pin on the Arduino that is connected to both the relays. Really simple. Looking at the MOSFET in the power drill, it's an IRFZ48, which has a maximum voltage of 60 volts, so that's high enough for us. Um, and it's a N channel MOSFET, like this, GDS so the gate is uh, where we connect the Arduino drain is where we connect the motor and S source we connect to ground because that is how it's connected in the drill looking at some more of the uh, specs here so drain source voltage uh, absolute maximum rating 60 volts as I said gate source voltage plus minus 20 volts so that's fine with our 5 volts from our Arduino and quite a large uh, continuous drain current 50 amps uh, so that is pretty high I'd say uh, so I don't think we'll have a problem there either and in the test I've done the heatsink doesn't get hot uh, at all and with that said let's just wire this together so connecting this we are going to use the same two pins that we used in the last episode uh, 9 and 10. And we begin by connecting pin 9 so that's the PWM pin or speed. So we connect pin 9 to the gate pin of the MOSFET. Pin 10 we connect to both in 1 and in 2 and this will be the direction pin we connect ground to ground of course and also we connect ground to the incoming signal from the power so connect that Ground is also connected to the source leg of the MOSFET and then we have 5 volts 5 volts connected to the signal side of the relay. On the hot side of the relay now so we connect the middle drain pin to one to the normally closed 
and one to the normally open. So in this case, the two outer pins. And the other pins we connect, so here we connect the normally closed pin to voltage plus and the normally open pin to voltage plus there. So those two to voltage around 12 volts in our case. And finally we connect the motor to the two common pins of the two relays. And this will flip between, as I said before, going from 12 volts in through the motor and into the MOSFET to ground. Or going the other way, going that way, following the black first and then in here and back into the MOSFET and to ground. So let's just set pin 10 to either high or low and run the fade sketch to see what it what this looks like. So here's the final setup. Um, I have the fade sketch uh, connected in here with just pin 10 set to high um, and that's just to uh, set the relays just the direction. So as simple as that. Um, and uh, so I ha had some trouble with the gearbox that's why it looks like that and this one hasn't been used for a couple of years so it had been clogged together but I think it is up to speed now uh, so I'm just going to connect the 12 volt power here so the fade sketch is on the Arduino running pin 9 going just as I have described earlier in the video So that's the fade sketch work doing its thing on the uh, motor. So yeah, working. And here's uh, another sketch that I will show in a later video. Uh, and this is with where I have two buttons. Because I'm going to move shelves, so I'm moving the shelves left and right with the two buttons, as you can see uh, in this video. But that will be explained in a future video. So, success! This means two things. This means that I can use all my cordless screwdrivers uh, when they the battery dies and there's no point of changing the battery they can have new life as uh, motors in my projects and by using all the components from or not all not the trigger but the MOSFET and everything is makes the motor and the MOSFET to be made for each other so that's good the second thing it means is that I can finally get my movable shelves moving again. They've been standing still and I have boxes everywhere because I've taken it apart to get this in there instead. That will be another video as I've said before. Um, so yeah, I really like that I got this working. I had my doubts during, as you saw the last episode, that the HD7881 did not work for this uh, application but now this works so with that said I hope you like this and that you get some ideas what you can do with all those old cordless screwdrivers and I hope you like and subscribe and do all that YouTube stuff and I'll see you in the next episode take care bye <laughs>